Hi, you're watching Velo News TV. I am Neil Rogers here at the finish of stage three of the Tour de Georgia in Gainesville. We're talking to Rock Racing, Cesar Grajales. You live nearby in Athens. What did you say? That was about an hour away. You're not racing, but you're here hanging out watching the race. Yeah, it's kind of painful because, you know, you, you want to be there. You're always wishing that you were racing. But it's good to come and, and see the team and uh, visit my, you know, my teammates, Santiago, Victor, Oscar, everybody, you know. They, I think, I asked them about what they think about racing the States and, and they love it. They, they, they weren't expecting uh, that the level was this high. And, but they're having fun. They, they really love it. Talk a little bit about the Tour de Georgia and its significance to you. I was here in 2004, the first time the race featured the Brasstown ball climb. Uh, Lance Armstrong, Jens Voigt, Chris Horner in a group. There's Cesar Grajales, relatively unknown rider, riding for Jittery Joes. You won the stage. You've, uh, you've come back. You finished, in the, I think, in the top five uh, on the stage in, in years past. Talk, talk a little bit about this race and what it means to you. Well, to me, it's the, you know, the biggest race of the year for me. Um, I live in, in Georgia, and plus it's the most difficult race in the States. I mean, you have California, but California has to have a, like an epic stage, it's like Western Ball, and that stage makes, makes a difference. And this year I think it's going to be even more interesting with the Team TT. And about 2004, that was a great experience. It was my first full season racing the States. Uh, I was coming pretty strong from Redlands, being second in Redlands be uh, behind Chris Horner. Um, and it was my first, really, really my first season in the States, full season. So I didn't know a lot about racing here. So I started the season pretty strong with Redlands, uh, with uh, San Dimas also, doing really well in San Dimas too. And then Tour of Georgia, uh, that stage, I was training, training that stage twice, at least twice every week. And But I didn't know, you know, you who's going to think, oh, yes, I'm going to win this stage, I'm going to beat Lance Armstrong, you know, like, it's like, you're not thinking about that. You're thinking about doing well. And, you know, you're good, you're, but you just don't know how good you are. And that day, I, I had the legs, I had the, the opportunity, and I think I... I attack at the right time, three guys to go. I was waiting for it, just looking like we were going uphill, and I saw this. The group was small. It was like three guys to go, and I thought, well, this is it. This is the opportunity. I'm not gonna wait until they start to attack each other. Yeah. So I attack. I saw I had a good gap, and I just was in my head. I was just thinking about keeping it, keeping the gap. In the last 800 meters, it gets really steep again. I look back, and and because it's very steep, it looks closer, you know, the, lap, the gap looks, you know, smaller. So I was just, in my head, I, was just, I just wanted to win. And, and, it, and I had the legs to do it, and, and it was an amazing win. I mean, something that, you know, pretty much changed uh, my life as a cyclist. Yeah, I remember that. It put, uh, put you on the map, and it put Jittery Joes on the map as well. And I, I, I'm remiss to not already ask for people who are watching and wondering why... Cesar Grajales is not racing. You've had tendonitis in your knee uh, going back to January. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, I got tendonitis last year. I uh, had a very bad crash to win a Georgia Cup and got tendonitis in my right knee. So I missed the rest of the season. I was getting ready for Tuna. So I missed the last part of the season. Um, before that, I crashed in Redlands. I remember last year I got third in the prologue, riding really strong. And next day I had a really bad crash, so I did Georgia anyway with a separated shoulder and a broken wrist. That's right. But I wanted to do the race, so I did it like that. I don't think I would do it again. It's a separated shoulder and a broken wrist? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's that, that, that what happened to me in Redlands. When I crashed in Redlands, separated my shoulder, third degree, and broke my wrist, my right wrist. So, and Michael Rice asked me, like, you want to race? And I'm like, well, I haven't been able to train in two weeks. Uh, but if I, I, I just started to ride the, the trainer, if I feel a little bit better, if, if I see that I can hold the handlebar, I'll try to do a race. <laughs> <laughs> and Michael was like, okay, I'm going to put you in the roster. I'm like, okay, I, I want to start and see how I feel. And, I mean, 
Well, I did very decent, and, and the last day I, I was in, a, in a, the right breakaway. I got the most aggressive rider jersey. I got to be in the podium, so that was all good for G3 Joes. So, and for me too. I mean, uh, I love this race, and I did it, and something good came out of of the whole race. And this year, uh, back again, injured. Uh, for the training camp, the airline lost my bike, so I had to do the training camp in a, in a spare bike from last year, a small bike. And you know, 12 days of ride, uh, riding really hard, uh, my right knee started to hurt. And I was trying to make it to California, so I kept pushing it, and it was a mistake because it got worse. So I had to stop, and now I'm coming back, and, and, and I think. I'm gonna be back racing in, in May. I think I'm gonna do Mount Hood, and I'm already uh, feeling pretty strong and, and looking forward to to do a, a good race. Yeah, I mean there are definitely other races in North America that feature a lot of lo big climbs, but there's nothing. First of all, so close to your home in Athens, Georgia, and secondly, there's nothing like Brasstown in the United States. Such a long, steep climb that's uh, where it's really going to decide uh, d divide the climbers from the rest of the field so so quickly yeah it's the, the kind of climb that if you don't have it you just get dropped it's like that you can just <laughs> hold the wheel or you know it's so steep that you just you don't have the legs you just get dropped straight away it's like if you see it's, it's right it's just going by himself like uh, the draft in other riders doesn't help so if you have it you are there. If not, you just get dropped. One last question. Talk a little bit about your rock racing team. I was uh, joking with somebody earlier that there's uh, three and a half Colombians on the team with yourself, <laughs> Victor Hugo Pena, Santiago Botero, and then Freddy Rodriguez. His father is Colombian. So uh, stronger Colombian contingency on that team than any other team in the U.S. Well, what's that been like for you to be a part of that team? Oh, it's been fun. The turning count, we had a great time. And when I haven't been able to be spend time with them now, but I mean, just today being at the bus with them, saying hi again, it just feels good. You know, not just because the language, just because I'm a good friend with Victor in Santiago since many years ago. And with Victor, I'm the godfather of one of his sons. With Victor Hugo Pena? Yeah, yeah. You're the godfather of one of his sons? Yeah, the, the older one. Ah, I didn't the know oldest that. one, yeah. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Mateo. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm the godfather of Mateo. And with Santiago, oh my God, we know each other since when he was a mountain biker. When he was just beginning in Colombia, he was a mountain biker. And yeah, I know him since probably 12, no, probably 12 years ago. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I've been friend, really good friend with, with Victor. And I know Santiago from, you know, from when he was a mountain biker and obviously in Colombia. And I, I like, I like it to be in a team. Team is a really, I mean, it's, it's a really cool mix. You know, some Americans and Oscar Sevilla, he's always joking. He's learning, learning a lot of Colombian. <laughs> he's joking, he's trying to, I mean, Colombians were always joking. So Sevilla is always making jokes, you know, like Colombian style. So he's like, oh, check what, what I learned today. So he makes a joke, like, like the Colombian joke. So I think he's having, he's having fun with the team. Yeah. Well, it's definitely a shame that you weren't able to race the Tour of California. You're not able to race the Tour of Georgia. But, you know, it's a long season, and the guys who were at those races invariably are going to be tired by July, August, September, and maybe that's when we're going to see you really come on strong. Yeah, yeah, well, still, you know, there are more races, still uh, a lot of the season to do, but, you know, California and Georgia, you're missing, you know, you, as an athlete, every year counts, so now I'm going to ha have to wait another year to Georgia, to, you know, for Georgia again. I never had the opportunity to do California. It's some very strange circumstances. When I was in Navigators, I did Lankawi, so I didn't do California. And now, because my injury, with Jerry Joe's last year, we, we didn't do the race. And now with the uh, rock racing, I got injured. But hopefully next year I get to do the both races. And for the rest of the season, yeah, hoping to, you know, to come back strong and, and just uh, try to, to, to do well. All right, Cesar. Well, thanks for the time. I appreciate it. Good to see you. Good to see you, Tunnel.